as well um, given here in the um, as part of the notes. So with freeways, as you can see, the access is fully controlled. Interchange spacing along the freeway is between, or is desirable is between three to eight kilometers, but uh, the very absolute minimum is two kilometers between interchanges. There are no public roadway at grade intersections allowed. Nothing at grade is allowed other than interchanges. For state freeways, which we will know far in the future will become freeways, yeah, you do have the interchange spacing, that's desirable. You do have an allowed um, at grade inter intersection spacing, but those are going to be at approved locations through interior satisfaction and likely those locations have to be uh, locations that will become future interchanges. Aside from that, nothing else is allowed in terms of accessibility. Principal arterials, the same uh, thing applies. Well, when it becomes a, the, the range is pretty much, um, uh, it can be either a fully control of, uh, control of access or a King's Highway. On average, the desirable spacing is 1,600 meters, but the absolute minimum is 800 meters. When it's King's Highway, you can go towards the 800 meters range without having a lot of issues uh, or uh, pushback from MTO, typically, or most of the time, but when it's a full control of access and then you propose an 800 meters minimum, that's where you'll start getting some uh, pushback, especially if there is room to be actually able to push roadway spacing more. And the requirements will start reducing as, as more as, as we dive into um, the lower classifications of roadways. So there is a little bit of uh, a example, a graphical example showing you uh, what I mean in terms of um, spacing. So for example, um, MTO does have figures for all the roadway types, of course, except for freeways or the fully controlled of access um, roadways. So with, for example, if you are looking at principal arterial roadways that uh, are full with full control of access, your minimum spacing between public roadways is two kilometers before getting or introducing a new public roadway, but it is desirable to have three to eight kilometer spacing. When you move down a little bit uh, to uh, class 2B, arterial roadways, but instead not King's Highway, uh, sorry, not uh, full control of access, but King's Highway, you'll start seeing as well uh, reduced speed, uh, spacing requirements. So the absolute minimum is 800 meters, but it's desirable to be um, 1,600 meters before introducing a new roadway uh, between that new intersection and the previous intersection. Is, is this clear with everyone? Okay, awesome. Okay, I'll not dive into this, but you'll find the different roadway classifications, um, class three, collector roadways, and um, local roadways um, down the left, if you scroll. And with that, I'll move into, um, at a jurisdiction level. So first we, we discussed the national uh, classification system based on TAC. And then we have uh, discussed the uh, provincial classification system based on the province itself. And now we'll be uh, going through each jurisdiction may have its own, every, each local or small jurisdiction may have their own classification. Uh, luckily for us in Ottawa, they, they do have the exact same of, of um, tax. But I know, for example, if you check the uh, classifications in Calgary, they are completely different. And you can find that information if you search online for Calgary. But in Ottawa, luckily, we are using the same corridor classifications. Um, the only extra thing is Ottawa does introduce a transit classification, and that applies for transit ways, um, like the uh, transit BRT, uh, pub, uh, uh, rapid bus transport uh, transit ways, if, if you guys are familiar uh, with these and have read in transit before. So the, all of these roadways that are solely used for transit, these are classified as transit classifications. That's the only difference. But typically, we start with uh, 
the uh, if I'm working for a project in Ottawa, I would look into if Ottawa has its own um, classification uh, guidelines or uh, broader classes. If they do not have the classification, I will jump into the higher level, the provincial. If the province in theory does not have classification system, you would use TAC. Generally, most of the major jurisdictions, such as Ottawa, Toronto, Mississauga, and so on and so forth, they do have their own roadway classification. One very quick way, actually, to be able to identify or find out the roadway classifications in Ottawa is, is to open their uh, Geo Ottawa tool. And it's a very handy tool, actually. Um, try to have it open here. So the city of Ottawa prepared its own interactive uh, ArcGIS-based tool, and that tool actually is very helpful to um, for us to get through a lot of shortcuts. And I believe this will be very helpful for you guys and, and your projects for those projects that are being done in Ottawa as well. So under layers, you'll be able to see, it takes a little bit while to load. Uh, if you can display load information, roadway classification, and you'll be able to find it and highlight it. And you can always get your legend as well. Uh, if you are looking for a zone uh, name or a um, design priority area or to feature transit projects and so on and so forth, recycling uh, routes, um, you can find all of these as separate layers in NG Ottawa. I would highly encourage you to play with this tool um, and be familiar with it. Typically, what, what you would uh, use is um, a mixture of things from the planning uh, layers, and as well as the um, roadway information, zoning information. So you would use a different set of things, actually. All right. And this concludes this section. I will give a minute in case anyone has any uh, questions so far.